Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps. Today we're going to test this crossband coupler, also commonly known as a diplexer. Now this device is commonly used in a couple of different configurations and can simplify antenna and feed line installations by allowing transmitters of differing bands to use a common feed line. In use case one, we're taking two different transmitters of differing bands and feeding the signal into a single feed line and a single antenna supporting both bands of operation. And that's what this device is being used for. And this model TS1545 is for VHF and UHF. Now in use case two, we would take two transmitters of differing bands, then feed the signal into a common feed line. And if the antennas we were feeding were both monoband antennas, we would place another one of these crossband couplers at the antenna end of the feed line and connect the respective antennas to the respective ports on the crossband coupler. Now the crossband coupler in both use cases outlined here allows both transmitters to operate simultaneously in the shared feed line. The crossband coupler does so by providing isolation between these two ports, one is which is high frequency pass UHF in this model and one which is low frequency pass which is VHF in this model. Now this model is rated for 400 watts of power but the amount of isolation between these two ports is insufficient for that amount of power when this device is used alone. The specified amount of port isolation is only around 25 dB or so. And the most transmitter power you would want to use with this particular device is 25 to 30 watts if either of the connected radio's receivers is capable of safely handling a power input of 20 decibel milliwatts, which is approximately 100 milliwatts of power. We are testing this device because it is suspected of being defective. For this test, we are going to use a Nano VNA. Now I use the Nano VNA often, but I rarely film it because I don't like the way it comes out on camera. And yes, I could use the software, but that defeats the purpose of the Nano VNA's portability, which is its strength in my opinion. For our equipment, we'll be using a 50 ohm load and two short SMA male to in male and in female RG216 jumpers. We will also be using a military surplus in male to male adapter. I am going to test this device for you on camera and I am doing such with the belief that the viewer has a basic understanding of the Nano VNA and how to calibrate the device with the equipment you will use for testing. My Nano VNA on power up defaults to a saved full spectrum calibration using two 36 inch SMA male to BNC male jumpers. We're not going to be using that cabling configuration or full spectrum for this test, so we will select a previously saved calibration using the equipment we will be using for this test from the recall menu. Next, we will select the display menu. In that menu, we will select our S21 port in the channel menu, and then we will go to our format menu and select log mag and then we will connect the cabling from our S11 and S21 port together through our test cabling and adapter stack. Then we'll move our marker a tad and ensure that our initial through measurement fluctuates less than two hundredths of a dB. First we will test for insertion loss and this is how we will connect our device under test for VHF. The RF goes out port S11 through our device and is measured at port S21. The load goes on the UHF port. This is how it looks connected. And here is our measurement. We have 0.35 dB of insertion loss at VHF through our device. Marker 3 should represent our isolation, but we are going to confirm that in another test. Now we will reverse our connections at the transmitter ports for the UHF test. The S21 cable stays on the antenna port. Our UHF insertion loss measurement is 0.46 dB and marker 1 should represent our isolation. Now we reconfigure our connections for the isolation measurement as shown. We feed S11 RF through the device and receive it on S21 and place the load on the antenna port. 
and here are the results of our isolation measurement, which is an average of 27 dB. Note the numbers almost coincide with the measurement data captured in our inertial insertion loss measurement. Well, like paternity court, the results are in. The device falls into the isolation window of 23 to 27 dB of isolation. However, the device falls outside of the insertion loss window or specification, and the specification is two tenths of a dB per pair. Our device under test had an observed average insertion loss of four tenths of a dB for one device. Now, the Nano VNA, although cool, is at the end of the day a toy. Considering that the device under test wasn't wildly out of specification, I elected to test the device on my spectrum analyzer tracking generator to see if there was a large disparity between results. And here we are using our spectrum analyzer on the insertion loss measurements of our device. And this is the VHF insertion loss and we're looking at a quarter of a dB. And then we'll go ahead and go to marker one which is UHF, and we're minus 26.2. And here's our insertion loss numbers for UHF. And we're looking at 0.24 dB at UHF, and then at VHF, minus 25.15 dB. And here's our isolation on the spectrum analyzer at UHF. We're at minus 25.91 and at VHF, minus 25.82 on isolation. Well, in studying our results, we can see that there is a disparity between our instrument's results when compared to one another, and that the nano VNA's measurement spread increases as frequency increases to a greater degree than that of the spectrum analyzer. We're talking nine hundredths of a dB of max deviation in the spectrum analyzer and 1.54 dB of max deviation in the nano VNA. And this is on measurement of the same device. But I digress. The device under test still falls below the insertion loss specification in two separate tests with two separate instruments and will not be returned to service. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Until next time.